Johns Creek punting their ticket into the GHSA Class 6A state championship game. Creek on three! Creek on three! One, two, three, Creek! Creekview, this was our first region game of the year. The 10 seniors having their last first region game, I think it was huge for all of us. We're on the road, but it was our first chance to prove something in region. And we came out a little flat. We started off very rough. We had a terrible first half, and we ended up being tied with them 0-0 at halftime. We just were not capitalizing. We weren't creating the opportunities that this team is so well known for. So halftime as a coach, was a little bit of a come to Jesus, per se. Pay attention, pay attention, pay attention. Turn, turn, you have to love. We had to remind them that nothing was gonna be given to them this year, that the target on their back was so big and that everybody wanted to beat Johns Creek. That was everyone else's goal of the season. Where ours was to win a title, everyone else just wanted to beat us. It took us a little while into the second half, but we kind of got our groove going again. All the girls were passing with each other really well. They came out, scored three goals, and they finished the first region game winning three to nothing. When we got to region, the players and their focus and their intensity and their desire went through the roof. That was very evident in the Creekview game. The boys came out dominating the first half with a goal from Cameron Gorst. We need to score again, and again, and again. All right, I need you guys to go out there, revved up this 40 minutes. I need you to put them under intense pressure. After halftime, the boys continued to show their dominance as goals from Julian Seher and Bube Anuani sealed the game four to one. After the game, it was like a sense of like, okay, like this season can be something good because everyone contributed in that game from the first 11 to the bottom. Our team came out and absolutely just throttled them. What was it, 4-1, we steamrolled them. Um, we showed that you're not messing with us this year. Like we're not gonna be some team that you just walk over as easily as you may have in the past. Both the Gladiators girls and boys teams continued to dominate in their region play, winning their second region game versus Riverwood 3-0. This set up a huge region rivalry matchup between Cambridge at home. However, an unexpected obstacle for the girls team was First play of the second half is where we hit one of the biggest spots of adversity for the season. Kate Kinneman went down a bad step, but she knew, and I think we all knew, inevitably it was an ACL. It was heartbreaking, but we had to come together as a team after this leading into our next game because we had to play Cambridge. Kate had 16 goals in the first six games of the season. Without Kate, they would have to face a loaded Cambridge team for what many were calling the region championship for the girls' side. For the boys, they had to face Cambridge, a team they had never beat in school history. Cambridge was our biggest game of the season, 100%. We knew that this team was going to be probably one of the best in 6A and that we might have to face them again going into playoffs. We went up pretty early. The first goal, Lana's goal, Reagan played a through ball to Lana and she scored. But Cambridge came back. Sierra. Second half was definitely a battle, but ultimately the game regulation ended in a 2-2 tie and region you can't end in ties because you have to have it for placement so we went to overtime in that overtime had an opportunity to score the game-winning goal she dropped the ball and i pulled it back from her and you know took a shot and it happened to go in the net <laughs> it felt insane just because like um we hadn't like played a team that was kind of at our level yet and um, winning against a team like Cambridge um, was a great feeling. Cambridge was our third region game of the year and it was our first home region game. And we were 2-0 in the region. We were the number one seed so far. For the boys team, we've never beat Cambridge in school history. So we knew that 
We had to make history, we had to beat them in order to get one step closer to a region championship. Going into Cambridge, um, it was a very, very important game for us because it was like right in the middle of the season of region play and teams were starting to separate from the top to the bottom, so playoff spots were starting to get locked in. The game honestly wasn't very exciting. It was a very defensive game between both teams. Pick up the intensity, 40 minutes, win this game. In the last couple minutes of the game, uh, we broke through and Cameron scored that goal. It was one of the happiest moments of my coaching career. With like three minutes to go, I remember someone threw the ball in from the sideline and then one of the other team's players like headed it up in the air and then it came down and I just beat the defender and slotted it in and then I went and celebrated. Then it was just a minute and a half left in the game and we brought it out with the 1-0 victory and that really helped us on our path to making the playoffs. Big performances from our whole back line, all the way from the left back, all the way to the right back, like all four across. I mean, they all stepped up. Going 80, 90 minutes without conceding a single goal is an accomplishment by itself. After two big time wins by the girls and boys teams, Johns Creek was set to play their next big region matchup at Chattahoochee High School. The girls team found themselves down early in the first half. To Chattahoochee's credit, they came out fighting. You know, we went down first and we were down 1-0 all first half. We were just feeling like pretty shocked, but we knew that we had a whole second half. So going into second half, we knew we needed to put one in. That first goal going in, I think, brought the momentum up a lot. After the Lady Gladiators scored one goal in, it wasn't long after that two more followed, ending the game in a must-needed 3-1 win victory. The boys, on the other hand, have a long history of competing against Hooch. The Chattahoochee game, I mean, it's big every year. I mean, it's, it's the one that my players look forward to the most. There's so much passion on the field at all times. A bunch of my club teammates and friends play on Chattahoochee's soccer team. And you know, we kind of talk trash a little bit. We kind of go back and forth. At the start of that game, Chattahoochee took the kickoff. The rest of my coaching staff wasn't even looking. And Cameron took the ball off of one of their best players. He looked up and had a go from 40 yards. I don't know why, I don't know why my brain told me to shoot it from that far away, but I just let it go and it just goes over the keeper's head into the top left corner and I'll never forget that goal. That was crazy, like the first eight seconds of the game, Cam slots a wonder goal. Just to get off on that start was something super special and seeing everyone celebrate and seeing everyone kind of like what just happened. It was historical. I mean, we hadn't beat Hooch in who knows how long, I couldn't tell you, but it felt, it felt so good to beat Hooch my senior year. The Creek held on to win the game 1-0, elevating their record to 5-0. Both the girls and guys teams would have a chance to secure the region championship in the final region game versus Sequoia. Sequoia was one of our last region games. It was at their house, and this was to clench first place and get the first seed into playoffs. You know, we wanted to show up early to support the girls because they were also clinching their region championship that night. What, Lana scored five goals in the first half. Sierra's mom made like a really cute sign, um, and we all took a picture with it. It just felt really good. All of our hard work like meant something, and then we also put ourselves in the best position for winning state. That feeling is one of the best feelings ever, knowing that we have won region four years in a row. We in the region title tonight, understand? Sure. All right, let's get it done right now. Let's go nuts, all right? But you've got to do the work here to make it happen. We knew that we win, we won region for the first time in what, Johns Creek history? And we were all saying like, no way we're getting back on that bus. Without, without a region championship. And that Sequoia team was very good. They have a lot of speed up top. Their center back is incredible. We were tied 0-0 at halftime. It was a very intense game. The boys were visibly frustrated. We had lost Ben, one of our center backs. Knox was an absolute beast for us all year and, and an animal for us. Almost seamlessly you know, slid in to play center back alongside Jeremy. We went on the second half, and in the first 10 minutes, we won a PK, and Jeremy put us up 1-0. Believe it or not, we got scored on twice within the next five minutes. We had never been down in a region play before, so this was something that none of us had experienced. That hurt, that was a big blow for us, going down 2-1 in the second half, and then, as you know, I mean, late in the game, Cameron with the equalizer. Three minutes left, um, Noel throws in the ball, and I turn with my left foot, 
and shoot it left foot to the goalkeeper's right, to my left. It was just a surreal feeling. It's like it brought everybody together. Everybody went mad, sent it the extra time. You can see all the girls are cheering like it's one of their own goals. Here's Lana, Tori, and Lily jumping up and down, hugging each other. Almost right away in the first overtime, Amaya drew a, another PK. It was the second PK he had drawn in the game. Jeremy stepped up. I don't even know if he wanted to because when they called the penalty, I could see in his eyes. He was like, uh oh, I gotta take another one. Put the ball down, run up, place it left. It wasn't the greatest PK, but it went in, and that's all that matters. Such a sigh of relief, and I knew that we just had five, ten more minutes to close out the game. They held on to that lead and secured. Um, the region championship, the first region championship for the boys in school history. Right as the whistle blew, the girls team, Coach Byrne, all of them ran onto the field and we were all celebrating together. We all ran on the field and started cheering, who's Creek, John's Creek. <laughs> Everybody in the program was behind that win, all the way from the girls cheering us on in the stands to the, to the bottom of the bench. These two varsity teams to win region titles in the same night was probably one of my favorite parts of the year. Headed into the state playoffs as the number one seed, both Gladiators teams were looking to dominate anyone in their path to the state championship. Junior year, when Corona came and our season got canceled, I just knew senior year was the year we had to go into playoffs super confident after um, winning region. We knew that wasn't all we wanted to accomplish this season. Um, so going into playoffs, knowing that if you lost, you were done made us excited, nervous. Alatuna was our first round game. It was the first step of five. It's a new season. You're zero and zero and you win or go home. Nothing's guaranteed anymore. Everything that you had done up to this point is great, but it doesn't matter anymore. You know, we went up pretty early, but then not much longer after that, they scored on us. So it was one one for a little while. So. Again, I think those adversity points that we had hit earlier in the season helped them not let that affect them. They continued to play their game and ultimately came out on top, winning that game 7-1. When the playoff draw first came out, uh, we noticed that we were going to be playing Pope. And Pope, the last time I played for Johns Creek, Pope is the team that knocked us out and ended our season. So for me, I had a little bit of a chip on my shoulder. While we were warming up, we were watching the girls' game, and they absolutely blew out their first-run opponent. And we were like, it's time for us to take care of business. At the beginning of the season, we knew we just wanted to get the playoffs. Started off and, and CJ made a couple of just absolutely you know, stunning saves. We almost got scored on twice. CJ had some incredible saves. We took control of that game. I mean, all the way from the back line to the, to the front three. I mean, we didn't concede a goal and we scored six. We kept pressing, playing well. They had a lot of fans. We had a lot of fans that game. So you could feel the atmosphere growing and getting more exciting. And then after that game, we celebrated, but we weren't too happy because we were like, the job isn't finished. At that point, I think the boys knew they were, they were primed for a run in the state playoffs. They knew that they had what it took to make a deep run towards the state championship. The Gladiators continued to scorch competition in the playoffs, winning both rounds two and three by large margins at home. Headed into the final four, the girls' team would have a rematch against region rival Riverwood at home. Final four semifinals was against Riverwood, which we had already played in a region game earlier in the season. We had four goals that game, but it's really hard to beat a team twice, so it was very nerve-wracking all week. We've been in the state championship once, but every other year we've gone, and you know, we've ended up losing in the final four game. It's that hump that we wanted to get over, and we had it in four years. So it's the exact same thing as freshman year. Like, we played Riverwood regular season, beat them, we had to play in Final Four. We knew we had to put goals away, which we kind of were struggling to do. We were creating opportunities. We just could not find the back of the net, you know? It was a very back and forth game, a lot of kickball. Both teams were really anxious who was gonna score first and go to the state championship, but um, Dewey fell over and got herself a PK. Dewey going in front of the keeper and her getting so frustrated to literally two hand shove her into the ground created a PK opportunity for us. And I was extremely glad to see Dewey step up as a senior four year starter. Um, and take that PK. It was like my best friend. So I was super excited for her. <laughs> she hit that top left banger and everyone's screaming. This girl I have seen fight through so much and 
she truly put this team on her back and she scored that PK. It was fantastic. And ultimately, this was the leading point into a state championship game. The boys traveled to downtown Atlanta to the iconic Grady Stadium to face off against North Atlanta for their semifinal game. Although the first half ended in a 0-0 tie, the Gladiators comfortably cruised to finish the game 4-0, not letting in a single goal all game. This set up the state championship game to be played as a doubleheader. The state championship. This was a day to remember the state championship. It was the most stressful week of my entire life, doing finals, knowing school is about to wrap up, and we, I had probably had the biggest game I had at Johns Creek in the past three years. This group of girls had never been to a state championship before. The biggest thing for me was reminding these girls that it's just another game, but it's also the game that they've been working for all season, and that they had to believe in each other and that they had to believe in their coaching staff. Going out of that locker room, walking onto that field, I was like, oh my God. Like, it was such a cool feeling. Playing in that type of environment, I think it also boosted up everyone's confidence a lot. And when we went up 1-0, it was, you know, that little bit sigh of relief in reality, but it was also, we can do this. And I think it gave them like, that reassurance that they know that they can do this and they know that they could win this game. And so Lana got on to the end of it and got it to her left foot and one of the best goals I have ever seen. Um, upper left, it was left, upper left hand corner is so good. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember that um, feeling. It was insane. Um, it felt good to like make an impact on the game because that's always really important to me. Me and four other girls were marking their number nine as we had to lock her down so she couldn't get by herself and get free and score on her own because that's just what she does. <laughs> so going up 1-0 and then not too long after going up 2-0 and being up 2-0, yeah, it's great. But it was also kind of flashbacks to that last game of we cannot let that be the deciding factor. Towards the end of the first half, Lana plays the ball into Reagan's feet. Reagan actually played me the ball. Um, and made a great run. Um, I saw her and I played it back to her, kind of like, kind of a through ball, kind of not. Um, she took a perfect touch uh, to beat the rest of the back line and just slipped it right past the keeper. And we were up 2-0 and I can't even explain like how amazing that felt. Through the second half of their state championship game, the back line and goalkeeper Sierra Fowler kept Cambridge locked down and off the score sheet the rest of the game. It was only a matter of time before Johns Creek sealed the state championship. I remember a couple minutes left in the game. Some of the fans started cheering about starting the bus and I turned around and yelled at them to stop because anything can happen in a soccer game in eight to 10 seconds. Goals can be scored so quickly. I can hear uh, Coach Chico actually screaming, saying um, in La Esquina, so in the corner. I looked back at Chloe and Chloe was like, like looking at me like this is real. Once the crowd started going 10, 9, I was like, who am I running to first? The final whistle blows and I was actually, Tori was right next to me because we were both playing six. I just remember looking at her and it was like the best feeling ever. We like literally, we were hugging each other so hard and then went and joined our team and it was so much fun. Like celebrating with our team because we finally won stay after three years of just like, Losing and then getting a year taken away from us, like one of the best feelings ever. Because as that clock counted down, it was a feeling I'll never forget. As a coach, the sense of pride. I was so happy for these girls that they got to experience it because they had worked so hard for it. We put in way too much work to lose and I think getting that trophy and us jumping with it, oh my God, it was so nice. To see the smiles and the tears and you know, to have the hugs and the jumps and the excitement and just getting that trophy and watching them lift it in the air was probably one of my pr most proud moments as a coach. So a uh, state championship, uh, we all know that was against Dalton. The feelings that day, I, I couldn't describe to you. I mean, I woke up, 
thought it was gonna wake up like it was any other day, but as soon as I woke up, it was, it was like, like, wow, tonight's the night. Tonight's the night we can make history in Johns Creek. And telling the boys, you know, enjoy the ride. You know, this is, this is supposed to be fun. So when you go out there and take the field, you know, soak it in, absorb it, love it, you know, enjoy it because you've earned it. On the way to the stadium, um, we watch the girls play on NFHS Network. It's like the live stream of the game. And all the boys crowded around one computer in the back of the bus and were cheering so loud when the girls were scoring. And there's a video of us when Lana scores her goal, the first goal to put them up 1-0. The whole bus goes crazy from the seniors to the freshmen, even if they weren't friends with the girls team, the boys team. That was like the moment for me where I was like, they really wanted the girls to win. They were really supportive of them. The stadium was packed. Dalton is known for bringing thousands of people to games and our fans didn't let down either. There was a white out and there was white filled this half of the stadium, red filled this half of the stadium and it was crazy. It was a scene I've never experienced before. Just two minutes into the game, Gorst found daylight in the attacking third. And I took on two defenders and beat them with a fake shot and slotted it in with my left foot and that feeling was insane because we were the underdogs going into it and to score in the first two minutes of the state championship and to hush all those Dalton fans and to celebrate with the bench, with my teammates, with all of our fans. Only two and a half minutes into the game, it was, it was awesome. However, Dalton was the number one nationally ranked team for a reason. Just minutes later, they stormed back to score two goals, ending the first half up two to one. C.J. Wyborn kept Johns Creek in the game with nine saves alone in the first half. It was the last 10 seconds, obviously, we saw I saw the whistle go, I saw the, I heard the buzzer go off, I saw the Dalton players start running, and as soon as they did, I just, I dropped to my knees. I mean, I laid down on the floor. I didn't, I didn't know what to do with myself. I was, I was devastated, like I've never been. But it was just tough. It was tough to see all the hard work that we had done not pay off in the end. But nevertheless, a great season. Made to the state championship, something nobody thought we were gonna be able to do. We played with the best of the best and we competed with the number one team in the nation. And that's something that I'm so proud of our team for doing. And we played well. I mean, after the game, it was very, very tough seeing all the seniors cry because it was our last game together. Seeing the lower classmen cry because it was our last game playing with them and hugging Coach Byrne, hugging some of the teachers, hugging Coach Bowler after the game. To our unbelievable coaching staff, Coach Bowler, Coach Dolly, Coach Kreis, and Coach Mahdi, I just want to thank you guys so much. I'm just glad that we all got so close together and I really felt like it was a family and a family that I'll never forget. My team, thank you for the best four years of my life. Um, pretty much all of my friends come from soccer, so it's been really nice to just have a family, like a second family to hang out with 24-7. Playing as a freshman on varsity with all these expectations was definitely nerve-wracking, but the seniors were really accepting and kind of me all throughout the season and it really helped me enjoy the season all together and um, especially in state when we didn't get the result we wanted uh, we just everyone had each other's backs and it was such a blessing to have. Playing with my sisters was like the best thing for like me and my family. We've talked about it for like so long and then when it finally like happened it was like the coolest thing ever and especially like winning state like the one year that we're all together like winning state for the school and like seeing all of my parents like being so happy and my grandparents especially being really happy but like just being able to like hug them after every game and like just knowing that like we always had each other that was like really fun. Not only has this been one of the most successful seasons for both the boys and the girls but it's also been the most memorable. There were several new friendships made throughout the season while also meeting some of the people I called my best friends within a month. There was never a dull moment with this group and that's why I want to thank you all. Thank you for being the people that made me the happiest and the people I'm able to call my lifelong best friends. I want to give a quick shout out to the film crew that we had there, Omid, Ilya, Sarah, and everyone else that came. They came to pretty much every game, took pictures, took videos. They allowed this documentary to happen. They were the ones that made this happen. So I want to thank them and we really appreciate y'all capturing